state of fashion e-commerce. Well, joining us today to speak about that, Gregor Baumeister, who's the Director of Warehousing and Distribution at Boimer Group. Gregor, it's great to see you. Welcome. Thank you, Russell. It's a real pleasure to be here today. Great, great. You know, Gregor, the, uh, it's, it's no secret that during the pandemic, the online sales of just about everything just shot up exponentially. But certain, certainly in the fashion industry, that is true. Those sales really took off. Well, talk to us, though, about that whole phenomenon that took place in fashion e-commerce during the pandemic. Very true. We're dealing as Boimer Group with a lot of fashion companies, and they are usually omnichannel uh, companies, either or pure retail or pure e-commerce. And what we saw is that during the, during the pandemic, of course, all the store access was completely disrupted. So we're not we're seeing we were seeing much more than just a regular um, growth trend in e-commerce, but it was really shooting up exponentially. And some of our customers were experiencing growth rates of way over 100 percent monthly on a month to month basis. So this is putting a complete new demand and stress on their distribution centers um, in order in terms of fulfillment and capabilities to service this channel uh, where while while the uh, retail channel was completely disrupted. Are you seeing now that we are in a post pandemic world? Are you seeing that kind of growth? Are you seeing that those uh, that same type of challenge or have have things kind of uh, quieted down a bit? What would you say? If you if you look at the growth rates during the pandemic, they really shot up exponentially. And it's a little bit like a graph when you look at a stock. At the moment, we're in kind of a sideway movement. Yeah, so we're consolidating uh, uh, during that growth that we saw. Um, it all has to do with the inflation, uh, you know, with the available spending uh, due to the higher, uh, the reduced available spending due to higher interest, etc., which is right now dampening the demand a little bit. But we see we don't see a crash right now uh, by no means. Mm -hmm. So we're predicting that uh, by you know 2024 at some point. We hit back the long-term growth uh, growth trend, and uh, we will see an upswing again. Well, then you need to be clearly need to be implementing now the solutions that are going to be required to deal with these challenges and to deal with the growth that you see coming. So, what uh, kind of uh, technology are we talking about? What kind of solutions? Let's talk quickly before before we talk technology. I would like to elaborate maybe a little bit on uh, what what was the drive what were the driving factors during the say 2020 2021 that was completely focused on increasing capacity capacity growth in the network mm -hmm. so what we're seeing right now during this uh, sideways movement is now right now the focus is on um, cost optimization um, driving productivity and efficiency in the existing processes um, and also uh, we have seen a great you know shortage of labor we're really looking at addressing labor shortage uh, situations by applying automation intelligently mm -hmm. so and now coming what type of solutions i think we're talking we're looking at solutions that are flexible flexible to scale to grow and also flexible to service the different um, sales channels and distribution channels i.e retail brick and mortar omnichannel as well as e-commerce so gregor when you look at uh where you see things going i guess my question to you then is what do companies in this space need to do now solution wise to prepare for the growth that they see coming in this sector what do you say I would say a smart way to prepare is to apply solutions that are modularly extendable, that can grow with a business so that you have the opportunity to invest when you need to invest with, of course, a little bit of foresight because you have a certain implementation time, but you don't need to jump in, jump in with huge investments right from the start, but you map out a plan and then as things develop, you, you basically activate segments of that plan as your business grows and, de uh, grows and develops. Mm -hmm. All right, now, Gregor, I want to turn to uh, Boimer itself right now, because I know that many viewers are going to are aware 
that Boimer has been around a long time. It's a very, very big company, et cetera. But let's talk about the space that you're in, in, in Boimer. Let's talk about the focus of the division you work for. And more specifically, what are you doing to optimize the operations of your customer base? What do you say? Well, first, Boimer is a family owned business. Uh, we're in, in business since 1935. Um, it's a globally operating company of about 5,500 uh, colleagues of mine. And we have different divisions. We have five divisions overall. One division is the logistics systems division I'm part of. And within logistics systems, I'm focusing on warehousing and distribution, uh, particularly the e-commerce uh, fashion um, segment. So what we're looking at and what we're bringing to the market is um, sortation technology, order fulfillment technology. And particularly what I'm happy to introduce here in the North American market this year is our new pouch system, which is particularly geared and designed for the fashion and e-commerce industry. Well, that's a great innovation and no doubt many people will be interested to learn more about that. Gregor, clearly you are busy here at Promat, the that's greatest true. Uh, material handling show. And I thank you very much for finding the time to sit down and speak with us. Thank you. Russell, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. It's Gregor Baumeister with Boimer Group speaking with us today about the state of fashion e-commerce. Thanks for watching.